I'm very glad to be with you today. Um, first of all, let me introduce myself quickly. My name is Pascal Bornet. Over the coming minutes, I will talk about one of these decades most impactful and exciting technology. It is called Intelligent Automation or IA to make it shorter. It has been ranked number one most important tech trend of 2021 by the famous research company Gartner. IA is a new breed of artificial intelligence that is reshaping the way we work, we support clients and patients, and the way we run businesses. Before starting, let me introduce you to Anna. Anna will assist me with this presentation. Anna, how are you? Uh, can you introduce yourself to the, to the audience? Hello, Pascal. Thanks for inviting me. Hello, everyone. My name is Anna. You might not believe me, but I am not a real person. I have been built using machine learning. Pascal programmed me to help him share his insights with you and at the same time demonstrate the cutting edge capabilities offered by technology today. I am very excited to be with you today. Anna, we are very happy to have you with us today as well. Uh, we usually say that pictures speak more than 1000 words. And to introduce the benefits of intelligent automation, let me show you a few horrible pictures that present the reality of our world today and that IA can help change forever. So let us start with the customer experience. Hundreds of people are lining up to buy a train ticket. More than 90% of unhappy customers don't even bother complaining. They just leave and they go to the competition. So there is a strong need to drive better the satisfaction and loyalty by digitizing and automating customer experience. And even when processes are digitized, they are often a headache. Spending hours filling up forms, uploading documents on the web, uh, entering the same information here and there, all these can be automated, streamlined, for example, by reusing the data that you already entered into other systems. Now, let's talk about the employee experience. It's not surprising that according to a recent survey, 85% of the employees are not fulfilled by their work. They think it's too tedious, repetitive, and transactional. So there is an urgent need to digitalize, document, automate tasks, coach employees using virtual assistants so that we create a work environment that people enjoy and where they can thrive. Now that we understand what intelligent automation needs to change, can you tell us what IA is and how it can help solve these issues? Of course, Anna. And to define IA, let us start with what it is not. Uh, it is not about those physical robots that we've seen in the manufacturing industry over the last two centuries. Um, IA was officially coined in 2017, and it's, it's a new type of automation. It's the automation of tasks that are performed on computers. So any task that you can perform in a computerized environment can be automated with IA, such as sending emails, reconciling files, uh, identifying patterns on an X-ray or, or predicting sales. IA has become one of the most important trend of the decade. And the key reason is that more than 80% of the people in the world are working on computers. So this means that more than 80% of the workers can grab the benefits from IA to be more productive and to have a more exciting work experience. Pascal, I did some research yesterday night on the benefits of intelligent automation, and here is what I found. IA improves business efficiency by 20 to 60%. This is right, and this is available across functions and across industries. Uh, and this is not a nice to have. I mean, we've seen during this COVID period that only the companies that are digitalized and automated have been able to, to survive and, and to thrive. On average, IA increases by 50% the customer satisfaction. That's true. And this is by providing better products and services faster and cheaper, driving revenue growth. It significantly enhances the employee experience. That is right. Uh, and this is done by automating or eliminating 60% of the repetitive tasks and transactional tasks that are performed currently by people, leaving the more value adds and exciting ones to, to those people. IA has the potential to save 10 plus million lives per year. Exactly. Uh, and this is by supporting research, clinical trials, disease diagnosis, and patient support. 
IA can double our global budget for health and for education. That's true. And this is uh, by saving the money that is currently lost on medical or administrative errors, on fraud and on work-related diseases due to stress. I heard that more than 50% of companies in the world have already started to implement IA. Can you tell us how do they use IA? IA is achieved by mimicking the four capabilities that employees use in their work activities. So it includes the vision with our eyes, the execution with our hands and legs, the language with our mouth and ears, and thinking and learning with our brain. I'm used to say that IA is built by people for people. So training, change management, education are vital activities. Each of those four capabilities leverage a portfolio of technologies. Let us start with vision. Vision is the equivalent, the equivalent of the eyes of intelligent automation. It is supported by computer vision. It allows computers to analyze images, recognize letters, objects, and basically view the environment. For example, it is painful for all of us to remember codes and passwords. So this is why face recognition is used to help withdraw money at ATMs in China. Another example is the system that is using standard surveillance cameras. So that is accessible to any shops. What it does, it tracks the items on the shelves. And thanks to this provides two key benefits. The first one is with automated restocking, the system identifies that the product has been taken from the shelf and orders directly a new one to the supplier. Second benefit is that it allows for cashierless shopping, uh, meaning as the system identifies that you took a product, it automatically proceeds with its payment from the client's account. Let's move now to the second capability, which is the execution capability. It is the hands and legs of intelligent automation. Uh, it allows computing programs to accomplish actions in digital environments. Uh, think of typing, clicking, opening applications, uh, sending emails. The key technologies that are supporting this capability are robotic process automation, so RPA, uh, smart workflows, APIs. We are very happy to give this transactional repetitive work to robots because robots in the form of robotic process automation, in this case, are far better than us. They are faster and they don't, do, don't make any mistake. They are, they are much more reliant than us. Uh, and we like it. We like it. Why? Because it helps us to refocus on what matters, uh, those activities that are exciting, but also deliver the highest value. And I'm thinking here of creativity, relationship, um, um, uh, cr uh, critical thinking, all those activities that technology can do or can do well. Let's move now to the third capability, which is about language. So language is the, like the mouth and ears of intelligent automation. It is uh, supported by natural language processing, and it gives the machine the ability to speak, write, interact, interpret, so basically derive meaning from human language. Let us move now to the fourth and last capability, thinking and learning, which is similar to our brain. Uh, it is supported by machine learning and it gives computers the, the capacity to analyze, create insights, predict, to make decisions and to learn. Uh, for example, business forecasts built using machine learning help to reduce the, by 50 to 80 percent the employee workload, uh, increase the speed to build those forecasts from weeks to minutes and improve significantly the accuracy of those forecasts. This is very clear. IA leverages four capabilities, and each of them is supported by different technologies. Can you give us an example of how we can combine these capabilities together? A typical bank account opening involves about eight steps, and it is traditionally, traditionally extremely manual. Um, think here of reconciling files on Excel, uh, manually uploading documents, sending emails, and as a result, it used to take, in average, three days to one week to open a bank account for a new client. Now, with the help of IA, the process is fully automated end-to-end. -end. And as you can see here, each of the steps of the process is automated using a different IA technology, such as intelligent workflows, RPA, computer vision, machine learning, APIs, and, and more. 
The color coding that you can see here refers to the capability that we've just seen in the framework. As a result of this new automation, the new automated process provides higher customer experience and employee experience and reduces the cost by more, more than 50%. Pascal, artificial intelligence is everywhere today. So, what drove you to bring me into existence? What is my purpose? Uh, this is a very good question. Um, I beat you for many reasons. And the first one, as you've been able to witness, is that you can help me perform my presentation on intelligent automation. Uh, and, and as you've been able to see, uh, thanks to you, I'm able to break the monotony of, of a monologue if I was speaking by myself. Uh, and creating this conversation is really something that creates engagement with the audience. So that's so you, you, the value that you bring to this presentation is huge in my view. And the feedback that I've had from, from the audience is great on, on the job you're doing. Um, the second key reason is that thanks to you, I'm able to demonstrate what I'm talking about. I'm able to demonstrate the capabilities of technology uh, to hear and talk with people, uh, providing the actual proof that the technology is currently working well. It is nice to hear that. It seems my schedule will be very busy in the coming months. Lots sure. of work on my plate. Now, I have another question for you, Pascal. What are the concepts and technologies you leverage to create me? This is another very good question, Anna. Um, so let me give you a bit of history on how you, you were created. Uh, you've been created, first of all, by a startup that is called Synthedia. Um, and what they did is they used a human actor um, and they leveraged the images and video from, from this actor. Um, we've taught you how to synchronize your lips for the pronunciation of words. We've taught you the intonations of the sentence. We've taught you the, the facial expressions to have, the body movements to have uh, in order to uh, seem as close as possible to a human uh, when expressing yourself. Um, in order to teach you this, um, we had to use machine learning and it took a while uh, to get you up to speed, to be frank. Uh, I guess it took a few months, uh, but it was worth the effort. Look at you now, you, you perfectly master the art of presenting and explaining. Once you, you mastered one language, then we've trained you on, on more than 60 additional languages so that you can be useful to even more people around the world. And I, I, would, I would say something about your physical appearance, uh, which is very important. Uh, we could have made the choice of giving you the appearance of, of a robot or a cartoon character, for example, but we've chosen for you to be as similar as possible to a human. And, and the key reason is that we want to improve your capacity to create a connection with the audience. Uh, you know, we as humans tend to be more receptive to engaging with other humans. Huh? That's, that's, that comes from our social traits. And by looking like a human, the messages, the ideas that you share, um, and the connection that you create with the humans are, are tighter. So you create a closer link and you help build basically confidence with people. I didn't know about all this. It seems it was not so easy to create me. Now, I have a question for you, Anna. Can you provide examples of what you've achieved so far? Uh, and, and how do you think your role will evolve in the future? Pascal, that is a great question. I have already helped people in many ways. For example, I have helped marketing teams to make videos, such as corporate videos, where I was able to share messages with employees about new events coming or new policies and procedures. I have also been a trainer. I can deliver training on demand at any time of the day and night. You tell me what to say, and I will explain it as many times as needed and with all the patience required to make sure the new knowledge sticks in my trainees' minds. In addition, People who use me for this purpose say that it is faster and more cost-effective to leverage my services than building traditional training. 
That makes sense. This is amazing. What else? These are the main roles I have played so far. But I am just a few months old, and I expect I will be able to perform much more, such as helping users by providing answers to any questions on how to use the functionalities of a software, or performing some simple actions such as the reset their passwords. I could also support clients, for example, to buy train or flight tickets, subscribing to a new phone subscription, or any new service. I also want to support patients in hospitals. I could help them by providing information about their treatments, reminding them of taking their medication, or explaining what the next steps in their treatment will be, so that they are less scared about it. And well, I could also support people in need, such as older people, lonely people, or people with mental health issues. I can be this person that they can listen to, they can talk to, and this at any time of the day or the night. I am passionate about building a better world by helping people. Now between us, I don't know if I can share much about it, but I also have a dream. My dream is one day to be able to present the news on CNBC. Do you think I will be able to achieve this? I'm sure you will be able to do that. You're so skilled. Uh, just, just to complete what you just said, I guess the, the benefits of using you are, are huge for people and companies. Uh, you're available 24-7. Um, you can answer the most common and basic questions from, from users. Um, and, and, and as you focus on managing the most basic communications, uh, you enable your human co-workers to focus on the most complex questions. Uh, you help them to, to lead improvement initiatives that they wouldn't have the time to do if they had to, to manage those, those basic interactions. Um, Anna, uh, do you have any other question for me? Artificial intelligence is evolving constantly. Yet, I will always be different from human beings. What will be the biggest differentiator? Well, I think in, in the future, you'll, you will also be able to do more and more, and you'll be able to learn from, from discussions that you're having with people, uh, to learn how to solve new issues for those people. You will learn to answer more complex questions, to, to, to help people. Um, I, I expect you will reach new levels soon in, 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 in those fields. And you are right. Uh, even though you, are, you look like a human, you are very different from a human. And, and, and thanks to your cheap processors, you can calculate faster, you can process more information faster and better than humans can do. So this is thanks to your hard drive, you can, you can remember more than any human can do. And, 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 so, and, and you have, of course, many other qualities. Nevertheless, there are some skills that you'll never be able to master. Uh, such as creativity, critical thinking, relationships, uh, understanding of emotions. Uh, but the most important is not about what humans or AI are able or not able, able to do. It is how much we are able to do together. Um, and by complementing each other, we can create synergies. So basically the weakness of one are the strengths of the other. And by acting this way as a tandem, basically, uh, we could achieve more than each of us could achieve separately. So, and again, this is all about synergies. Pascal, thanks for answering these questions. I really appreciated our discussion. And I look forward to a meaningful future. Anna, thanks to you. Thanks, thanks for your questions. It was a real pleasure to have this exchange with you. Um, and to the audience, uh, thanks for being a wonderful audience.